Uh, let's read this responsibly. Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says in verse number 1, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of power, and help them. Until the Lord hath given you your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan, toward the sun rising. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee, only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. So ever he be the rebel against and will not hearken unto the heart in all thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be thou of a good courage. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, strength that you have uh, supplied for us the whole day. And I, we thank you, Lord, even that... Uh, uh, most of us have uh, worked the whole day and uh, might not have a lot of energy right now. We thank you, Lord, for the privileged opportunity to come together every Wednesday night to pray, to have fellowship, dear Lord, most importantly, to study your word. I pray, Lord, that um, this time will be a source of spiritual um, uh, nourishment to us, dear Lord. I pray that you will help us uh, look at this uh, chapter, these uh, uh, verses, and be able to uh, understand them through the help of the Holy Spirit and apply them in our lives, especially in our lives as a church here in, uh, here in Sium Reap. I pray that you uh, help me, dear Lord, as I preach, and may you remind me of the things that uh, I have studied, dear Lord, that you have taught me while uh, studying this chapter. I pray that this uh, time will be a blessing to each and everyone. Uh, use me mightily, dear Lord. May the Holy Spirit work in the hearts of everyone to convict us, to challenge us, uh, to uh, of the things that you uh, want us to uh, change in our lives or want us to uh, do better 
or, or uh, to encourage us to continue to work for you, to work in your uh, church, dear Lord. I pray that you may, we may glorify you uh, this uh, hour that we're going to use. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much for standing. You may all be seated. Uh, I apologize if I cannot uh, 100% uh, speak in English because I'm already nervous. So, you know, when I'm nervous, I just speak Tagalog. But anyway, I'll do my best um, to uh, speak in English for our Kamai brethren who are here tonight. So, um, this message I've been preparing, uh, I, I was preparing it originally for, I thought that I, was, I will be able to preach uh, probably uh, earlier or, or, or as, as the year uh, the new year came in so the, the anyway it's still January so technically it's still we're still in the new year fe fever and some of you are still uh, you're still your new year's resolution are still alive I don't know uh, which one of you uh, which one of your new resolutions are still alive but um, Looking back at the year we just had last year, it was a very strange and difficult year. But depending on the person you're going to talk to, there are very different perspectives on that year. You know, a person who doesn't have the Lord Jesus Christ, who do not have hope uh, in his life, will definitely look at 2020 as a very negative year. Year that is uh, uh, that has a lots lots of downs, not so many ups especially uh, uh, economically, financially for everyone. For the believers, of course, it's a year of a lot of opportunities. And we can see that though we struggled in uh, ways that everyone struggled in the world, uh, we, had, we have had a lot of opportunities in the year 2020. We had a lot of uh, opportunities for fellowship, opportunities for uh, studying the Word of God, for knowing God better, for, for getting deeper in the Word of God. And, and all of these things that we have learned, now it's an opportunity to apply it. Uh, this new year, this time that uh, we're somewhat uh, slowly getting back to normal. Now, everything that we have learned throughout those uh, free time that we had, it's time to apply it. It's time to do uh, something about it. But as a church here, talking about IBCSR, we also had a very difficult year, not only because of COVID and, and, and the, uh, uh, you know all the situation, but we had uh, an especially... Uh, um, hard trials that came as well. So we can definitely say that when it rains, it pours. That we, we didn't only have uh, 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 trouble with our finances, uh, as most of us had, and, uh, uh, with, and, and all of these things, but we had trouble as a church, personally, uh, as, uh, as families, and as, as brethren here in the church. But that's life, right? Uh, a lot of people mess up. Even believers, people who have the Lord Jesus Christ in their hearts, people who are uh, faithfully working the work of the Lord, we mess up. And, and I'm not saying that now, 2021, that we have a new year, we have a new beginning, we're not going to mess up again, because we will surely mess up again. As long as you're still here on earth, breathing, you're going to mess up. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 16, adjustment falleth seven times, but rise it up again. You know, the reason why adjustment falleth uh, many, many times is because someone is causing them to fall. Someone wants us to fall. There, there are, uh, the devil is right there uh, give, uh, uh, placing traps, placing uh, things that will distract us away from the will of God. Uh, and many times we're going to fall for that trap. Many times we're going to trip. Many times we're going to fall. Many times we're going to mess up. But the Bible says we're going to rise up again. And then no matter how much time, how much, uh, how many times you trip a believer, no matter how many times you you make a, a, a true uh, disciple of Christ fall, one thing we can see that God can raise him up one more time. And and and, and uh, that that is what's happening here uh, uh, in in Joshua chapter one. And if you look at the life of Israel, I'm sure the Old Testament survey uh, uh, students are very familiar with this. If you look at the life of Israel, especially uh, starting uh, 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 in the time when Moses led them away uh, uh, out of out of Egypt, they had a very uh, uh, a rough life. Less, yes, a lot of blessings, but because of their disobedience, because of the things that happened, it, 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 was, uh, it was very difficult. But, and at the end of the journey, uh, uh, in, in that generation of Moses, it ended up 
uh, uh, not being able to, to, to go into the promised land. Now, all of these things, they experience hardships, they experience uh, a lot of uh, deaths, uh, a lot of battles, a lot of trials, though there's a lot of victories as well. They saw uh, God uh, doing a lot of miracles, parting the Red Sea, uh, defeating uh, enemies that they were not supposed to defeat, but there were also a lot of downfalls. They, they had a lot of complaining, they had a lot of uh, 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 disbelief towards God, they had a lot of time that they do not trust God, but after all of these things they ended up not being able to enter the promised land anyway and during this time uh, we're reading in verse 1 they're in the time of mourning you know all of these things happened uh, in their lives and, and uh, we can we can compare that the, to what a time they had a very difficult time but now during this time that Moses died Everyone is in mourning and everyone uh, uh, is experiencing the difficulty of the situation. The, the Lord is now raising up Joshua to give Israel one more shot at it. One more chance. To give them another chance to enter the promised land. And for Israel, this is so much like uh, a, a new beginning. That's why the title of uh, the, my message today is A New Beginning. And it's the same for us. Looking back at the past year, I'm sure we have seen all our uh, 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 downfalls. We have seen all our uh, uh, neglect. Yung mga bagay na nakaligtaan natin. You know, one, one good thing uh, w when our jobs were, take, uh, uh, were, were temporarily uh, taken away from us, you had a lot of time to think. Right? And, and I'm sure that when you were thinking, you were looking back, what were you doing? How were you treating the people? How were you treating the Word of God? How were you treating the church? How you're treating everything, uh, your relationship with God? You will find so many mistakes. Ah, I should have done this. I should have done this more. And if I'm, sh I'm sure right now, if I ask you that if you can just go back into, th into that year or before COVID happened, you will, say, you will unsay some things that you have, you, you have said. You will undo some things that you have done. And I'm sure a lot of us wish that, that we could do that, but uh, the fact is we can't. But the Lord is gracious enough to be able to give us another chance. You know, that's the reason, that's the reason why we serve a, a great God, a faithful God, because it's not only a God of second chances, but He's a God of many, many chances. Now here Israel is, 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 is in mourning. They're, they're now uh, being given by God a new leader to lead them into the promised land. They now have this new beginning. And it's very, very important for them to start right. It's very, very important for them to, to have learned from the mistakes of their fathers, to have learned from the mistakes of the previous generation, and now start right. Now that the Lord wants them to enter the promised land, first thing that they have to do is not to uh, make the mistake that Moses did to send spies and not trust the Lord, and not just go forward with the will of God. And, and, and this is a very vital chapter. It's a very a vital time for Israel to be able, especially for Joshua, to be able to set the tone. That we are going to do this right this time. We're going to enter the process. We're going to trust the Lord and not ourselves. We're just going to do the work of the Lord. And uh, there are many ways that you can preach uh, uh, through Joshua chapter 1. You can even spend a lot of weeks preaching through this chapter. You can uh, uh, go in, in many different ways. But I would like us to uh, uh, look at this chapter and compare it to, the, to, to us here as a church working in the work of the Lord. And uh, looking at Joshua, we can go, we can go in, a, in a direction where Joshua is a type of Christ. Uh, we, we, can, we can preach through this uh, doing that. Moses is a, is a type of the law. Right? And, and, and of course, uh, these people trying uh, their attitude towards Joshua in obeying Christ. But what I want us to do is get uh, through the chapter, hopefully if, if, if time will allow us, get through the chapter and then look at how uh, they treated the work of the Lord, how they treated the command of the Lord to Joshua, how Joshua treated God's command, how Joshua related to the people, and how can we apply that here in our, ch here in our church. So, a new beginning. Uh, since we also have a new beginning, I'm not saying that uh, this January is our new beginning. If we mess up, let's wait for the next January. No. Every time that we mess up, we can always start over again for the Lord. But now, let us treat it as a, as a new beginning this year, how to treat the work of the Lord right. So first, I will not spend a lot of time in verse number 1 and 2 because this was the preaching of our uh, pastor last Sunday. First, in verses number 1 and 2, I... As we start our new beginning, let us pray to the Lord that we're going to have a servant's heart. Let's pray to the Lord that we're going to be true servants of God. 
and truly serve one another. The Bible says in verse number 1 and number 2, it says here, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. You know, that is a great title of a biography. Moses, the servant of the Lord. While this, this, this world is so busy uh, uh, trying to make a legacy for themselves, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to uh, make sure that when I die, the people I will leave behind will remember me for what I did. The people that I leave behind will remember me for what I contributed to their lives. The people that I will leave behind will remember me for the things that I have accomplished. And there's a lot of people that, uh, uh, that come to mind w w when we think of that. People who did courageous acts. People who changed the world. People who uh, who's not only changed the world, but, but even changed your, your life personally. And there are people that really left a lasting legacy in this world. That even uh, um, hundreds of years after their death, people are still talking about them. Schools are still teaching about their lives. People are still reading about their lives. Right? You, you think about people like... Uh, um, uh, those people who only needs one uh, one word names like pag sinabi yung pangalan nila hindi na kailangan kumpletuhin kilala mo na kung sino di ba eh dahil mahilig ako sa basketball sabihin mo lang Kobe alam mo na yan ah sino si Kobe White hindi si Kobe White di ba nainis nga ako sa player na yun eh dat palitan pangalan niya pag sabi mong Kobe Kobe Bryant agad pag sinabi mong Lebron Si Lebron James lang yan. Kasi ito yung mga tao na, uh, th these are the people who, ch who, who are the best at what they do. Uh, these are the people who really achieve something at their craft. And then even those people who are notorious, like Hitler. Right? When you say Hitler, everyone knows about him. Everyone knows what he did. Churchill, and even, even in our Christian uh, circles, Spurgeon. When you say those words, these are the people who left a lasting legacy. And a lot of them really lived their lives for this purpose alone that I would uh, make a mark in history, that I would leave a lasting legacy. And as a believer, if we want to leave a lasting legacy, if we want to be known uh, to be something, it is this, the servant of the Lord. You know, if, 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 if someone is going to write a biography of your life and then, and then uh, uh, put a title there, I want the title to be the servant of the Lord. That's it. We should not strive to be anything else. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. This guy, the father of whatever, the guy who started this, the first one to do this, uh, the, 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 the only person in the Philippines to be able to accomplish all of these things. Ito yung mga pinapangarap ng mga tao. This is not something that people in the Bible are, are striving for. The only thing that they strive for is to be known as someone who is serving the Lord. Someone who live their lives trying to obey the will of God. And I pray uh, that as, as individuals and as a church, we would strive not to be known, but we would strive to be known of God as someone who lived our lives serving the Lord. As someone who lived our lives serving other people. As someone who lived our lives giving our lives for others and not living a selfish life. This is certainly Moses. And if you think about Moses, he's not a perfect person. He's not able, he was not able to enter the promised land. He, he, he messed up a lot of times. That's why, however great a leader Moses was, he was not able to enter the promised land. But at the end of his life, the Bible, God allowed it to be penned to, to, uh, for his life to be described as the servant of the Lord. You know, when you read the Bible, especially 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, marami time, you will read a lot of verses as a summary of a person's life. Uh, pag, pagka sinabi itong pangalan na ito, describe ng Panginoon kung anong buhay niya. A person who sought after the Lord. A person who, uh, uh, whose heart was not right with God. Yeah, and you, what kind of description would the Bible give you? If, 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 if the Lord will describe your life, what kind of description is that? A, a person who never seems to, 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 to be able to obey the will of God. A person who keeps on uh, disobeying the Lord. You know, one of the things that we, have, we should strive to do is to be a servant of the Lord. Why? Because if, if, if we live our lives serving the Lord and our goal is to serve the Lord and to do the will of God, it doesn't matter if people will recognize us or we're going to be written in a book or we're going to be, uh, uh, our lives are going to be preached behind the pulpit. It doesn't matter what matters in the eyes of God. We are someone who served Him faithfully in this life. As a believer, as a true disciple of Christ, we should, we should seek to have a servant's heart. Moses, let's look at this work of the Lord here in Israel. Moses, first here, is a servant of the Lord. And next up after him is Joshua. And, and, and the Bible says here, uh, um, um, 
describing Joshua, now, now after the death of Moses, the, the servant of the Lord came to pass, and the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. Same thing, Joshua is also busy serving other people. Joshua is also living an unselfish life. While Moses is busy serving the Lord, representing the people to the Lord, telling people what the Lord wants, Joshua is right there serving the man of God. Living a life to assist Moses. Living his life to make Moses' life uh, as easy as it can be, assisting him in everything that he, can, that, that, that he can help Moses with. He is Moses' minister. And to, of course, to that extent, he is also the minister of God. Why? As long as you are helping other people, especially in the local church, you are serving God. You are, we are serving God. If, if we say, uh, I did it for a pastor, I did it for a... No, you did it for the Lord. And if you do something in the ministry for a person, then you're wrong. Right? But if you do something for the Lord, it will be easy for you to help other people. It will be easy for you to serve others as well. You will not look at your stature. You will not look at uh, what you have accomplished. You will not look at your authority. You're not, you will not look at your office or whatever God has given you. All you will say, all you will look at is, am I obeying God in serving others as well? Joshua, Moses is a servant of the Lord. Joshua is a servant or minister of Moses. I, I, I really pray and hope and pray that if people will think about my name, that they will say that, yes, it's not perfect, but he, he, he served the Lord. He served the Lord. And, and, and let's, let's try, as we start this, uh, this new beginning here in our church, let us first seek and pray to the Lord that, Lord, give me a servant's heart. Amen. Not to be selfish. Amen. Not to think of myself. You know, there's enough, we have thought of ourselves enough times. It's time to think about the work of the Lord. It's time to think about others. And as we think about each other, the Lord will take care of what, of, of, of what we need. So Joshua... Moses minister. Now Joshua is going to be um, uh, uh, promoted to a higher place. As, uh, what, what, one thing that I want us to notice here, even though Joshua is being promoted, it's not something that he worked hard for. Magpapakabay ito para ako susunod na pastor. Diba? Masaserve ko si pastor para pag namatay na yan, ako yung ibubotong pastor. But that is not whenever God lifts someone up, God will lift someone who is just busy serving him. Look at the Bible, look, look, look throughout the Bible. God calls people who are busy working. God calls people or sends people out who are busy serving him uh, in his work. That's, that's what we should do. We just should just be busy serving the Lord. And if he uh, places us in a high position, praise him. If, he, if not, then praise him as well. I'm sure that this is Joshua. You know, you would know a person who God lifted up if, the, if, if his promotion will not change his attitude. That, uh, mahirap po kasi sa panahon natin malaman ngayon kung ang tumawag sa tao, ang Panginoon o sarili niya lang tinawag niya. You know, if a person called himself to be a pastor, you will see his attitude will change. He will not be able to handle the authority. He will not be able to handle the power. He will not be able to handle a lot of things. But if it is God who lifts someone up, to, to, to a place of authority or office in the church, it will not change his servant's attitude. He will use that authority to serve others more. Diba? Kung talagang servant ka, pag binigyan ka ng Panginoon ng mas mataas na posisyon, makikita mo yun as an opportunity, to, I can serve others more. I can serve God more. Why? Kung, kung, kung tunay kang mapagbigay, pinayaman ka ng Panginoon, para sa'yo, oh, mas makakapagbigay pa ako. Pero kung pinayaman mo sarili mo, hindi mo pamimigay yan. That's why Joshua here, he's being uh, promoted uh, by the Lord. But, in, but we, as we can see in his life here, uh, throughout the book of Joshua, that he used his promotion to serve in a greater capacity. Sana po, if, if, the, if it's the will of God in your life to someday be promoted in, 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 a, in a, a, a place of leadership like Joshua, that you will use that to serve others more. No, that's why, because in the economy of God, uh, being, uh, serving others or, or being great means to serve others. The Bible says Matthew 20, in Matthew 20, verse 26, 27, But it shall, be not, shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. You know, when, when Christ came here on earth, preaching and preaching to the people, a lot of his preaching goes against the system of this world. Laging yung sinasabi niya, kakaiba, kabaliktaran ng, ng, ng kinabuhayan ng mga tao doon. When, when Christ came here, oh, 
in, in the world, these Gentiles think that who is being served, they're great. But you know, in the kingdom of God, if you want to be great, you need to, to serve others. Right? In the economy of the world, if, if, if you keep on receiving, you're going to be rich. But in, in, God, in God's eyes, those people who are truly rich are people who keep on giving. That's why, that's why God said, if you want to be great, you have to be a servant. You have, you have to serve. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. The Bible says, well done, thou good and faithful what? servant. So that is what God is looking at. Are we really, do we really have that servant's attitude? Here in, uh, here in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, Paul says, but made himself uh, uh, of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And that's the essence of living a, a life that is like Christ, to have a servant's attitude. Now, verse number, one and, uh, verse number one is very clear. The Bible says, these two people that God has used greatly in the life of, of his people, of, of the people of Israel, they have one thing in common. They have that servant's heart. They have the servant's attitude. And I hope and I pray that as we begin this year, we'll pray to the Lord, Lord, give me a servant's heart. Verse number two, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. I, I want to make a point here that as we start our new beginning, let's have a new perspective on the work of God. You see, they, are just, they were just mourning the death of Moses. But, nakakalungkot. All, all, almost all their, the, the late last part of their lives, especially this new generation, they've known Moses all their lives to be someone who is leading them to God, closer to God, and leading them to, leading them to the promised land. Whatever Moses' uh, um, uh, weaknesses are or shortcomings are, this is a big blow to them. And God understands that. God gave them that time to mourn. But God said, my work doesn't stop just because Moses is dead. Kaya sabi ng Panginoon, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Tama na yan. That's enough. You know, yes, Moses is dead, but I'm still alive. Yes, Moses is dead, but my promise to you is still there. Yes, Moses is dead, but there's still something that you have to do. That's why, let's have that, uh, that new uh, perspective on the, on, on the ministry of God. Um, I don't know what is your perspective in the work of God, in the church of God, but let us now start to realize and accept that the ministry is really just all about God. It's all about God. It's the uh, first point I want to see here, that the ministry or the work of the Lord is more important than the minister. It is so much more important than the minister. I, I, I have... I, I, I cannot count how many times I've heard the opposite of this in the Philippines, that the minister is more important than the ministry. You know how many ministers have come and go, the ministry is still there? You know how many ministers have died and was buried and God's work is still here? You know how many great people, Paul, Peter, uh, Moses, we can see, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Timothy, and all of these people who, who did great work for God, they have all died, but the work of the Lord is here until now. And if we focus on the minister, we're going to be crippled whenever our minister dies. Kaya nga sabi ng Panginoon, okay, nakakalungkot, I give you time to mourn now. Work again. Work again. Moses is dead, you're gonna see him again someday. Yeah, uh, yes, someone who's important is dead. Someday you're gonna see him, you're gonna spend eternity with him. But now you're still here, I'm still leaving you here on earth, you still have work to do. You still have to do my work. Kaya nga, pagka nag tayo ng mga conference sa Pilipinas, 80% of the time, the preaching is about the pastor and giving. There's, a, there's very few preaching that goes away from that topic, pastor and giving. Why? Because these are the most uh, beneficial uh, uh, topics to preach. Kaya kung, kung pastor lang ako and I preach about the pastor, ako rin naman kikinabang. Kung pastor ako and I preach about giving, ako rin naman naman kikinabang. Rarely do you, see, do you see pastors preaching that I have to be a servant, I have to serve you, I have to help you, I have to give my life to you. Rarely would you see that. But you know, the Bible says the ministry, no matter how good your leader is, and Moses was a great leader. Imagine leading this many people out, uh, out from Egypt. Uh, Egypt during those times is the powerhouse of that world. Walang lalaban sa Egypt. 
Oh, walang lalaban sa Egypt and, 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 and will think that they will be victorious. But because of Moses' trust in the Lord, because of his obedience, because of his great leadership, ginamit siya ng Panginoon para i-lead them out of... And Moses was a great leader. He is going, he's a better leader than all of us combined here in the church. But he's not more important than the work of the Lord. God just used him. Wala na siya. Gagamit uli ang Panginoon ng bagay. And now Joshua is up. Now Joshua is the one uh, that, that the Lord will use. Now, uh, now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of, even to the children of Israel. So the ministry, the ministry is more important. The work of the Lord is more important than Moses, more important than Joshua. If, even if Joshua dies this very moment, God will call someone else. Right? Because the work of the Lord has to go on. You know, one pastor in uh, Phnom Penh always uh, says this, we attended this church, uh, that church uh, uh, for a few years, you can never thwart the plan of God. Never. No matter what you do, God's plan will prevail. No matter what you do, God's work will prevail. No matter how you mess up, it will prevail anyway, so better get in line. That's why it stuck with me, because inulit niya every Sunday. Parang pagka naisip mo si Kuya Alex, alam nyo na yung nasa isip natin, ba? But these are very important things that, that uh, hanggang ngayon natatandaan ko pa. God's work will, will, will go on. Now, it's Joshua's term. Um, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of, of Israel. The verse 3 says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. One thing we can notice here, especially in the early life of Israel, is that all of the commands that they're receiving is a command that comes directly from God. And in the ministry, what I want us to see here is, even today, the things in the work of God, here in church, here at IBCSR, the things that we do should always be coming as an instruction from the Word of God. Always as an instruction for the I'm not saying, um, because many, many churches today, especially the evangelicals or, or, or churches uh, that are not really focused on the Bible or just uh, pre uh, singing every Sunday or, or doing praise and worship, a lot of them are just obeying the vision of the leader. You know, my vision is to have this, to have that, to be this, to be that. To, by this year, dapat ganito tayo. Uh, at the end of this year, dapat isang libo ang naligtas. Uh, dapat, dapat ganito, ganito kadami tayo. Dapat ganito kadami na ipon natin. Dapat ganito kaganda building natin. I, I'm not saying that the Lord will not give vision to the leader. I'm not saying that. But if the vision of the leader doesn't agree with the word, with the word of God, we should just focus on the Word of God. You know, Moses, I, I'm sure Joshua here is still Morning, and he doesn't have any plan for Israel on how to move on. Diba? Nag-aano nag, pa siya, nag pa siya. Hindi naman siguro pagtas niya umiyak, nakadraw na yung mga plan niya, paano nilang i, paano nilang i, uh, uh, conquer yung promised land. But, he waited on the Lord's command. And in the ministry, we should, we should realize that it's always just wait for the Lord's command. Or wait, or look at what the Bible is saying. Yun ang ating gagawin. We should receive instruction from the Word of God. Always receive instruction for the Word of God. That's why the Bible says, it is, the Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because without it, we would not know where to step next. Dapat ganun po natin tinatrato ang Word of God. We should treat the Word of God in such a way that I will not take another step, Lord, unless you tell me to take it. I will not go any further, Lord, unless you're the one who tell me to go forward. That should, be, that should be the attitude. And these people, these Israelites, will not cross the Jordan River and fight people who are greater than them, who are more powerful than them, unless it's God who told them to do it. You know, these people, kung, kung, kung ang pastor lang natin ang nagsabing mag-inuman tayo dito ng, ng, uh, ng uh, lason at lahat tayo hindi mamatay, walang iinom dito. Siya lang kasi nagsabi nun eh. Pero kung mamabasa niya sa Bible, word for word, uminom kayo last, hindi kayo mamamatay uh, 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 sa, sa, sa panahon nyo ngayon. Ba, sabi ng Panginoon, ba, gawin natin. Kung yun ang sinabi ng Panginoon. But these people will not obey Joshua if it's only Joshua commanding them. But they know, and Joshua knows that if this command is from God, gagawin at gagawin nila. And as we start uh, this new year, I, I hope and I pray that we have this resolution that if it is God who says it, hindi na po question, gawin na po natin. Hindi na po dapat pagmitingan pa. Kung maliwanag sa Bible, ang dapat natin gawin, let's just do it. 
If it's very clear from the Word of God, you know, there's only uh, the only time that it is acceptable for a pastor not to consult the leaders or the members, it's when it's very clear from the Word of God. Hindi na niya kailangan tanongin sa atin kung kailangan natin mag-support ng mission because that is commanded in the Word of God. Hindi na niya, hindi na niya natin kailangan pang pagmitingan kung dapat tayo mag-soul winning because that is commanded by the Word of God. Hindi na natin dapat pagmitingan kung kailangan tayo magkaroon ng Bible study because that is commanded by the Word of God. You know, that's why Joshua here, we can see here that after all the things that he received instruction for the Lord, immediately agad niyang sinabi uh, sa mga tao. But before that, let's, let's move on to verse number Four, from the wilderness and verse number four just deals with uh, the, the scope of his promise for God's promise from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates all of the land of the Hittites unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast verse number five there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Uh, the point I want here to make is it is the presence of God that strengthens the work. But it is the God, it's the, it's the word of God that gives us instruction. And but it's the presence of God that, that strengthens the work. You now we can have the best pastor in the world, but if it, but if God's presence is not in this church, we will fail. Uh, we can have uh, the best uh, uh, the best engineer as a pastor, but Whatever his plans will be, will fail. Kung hindi lang din po ang Panginoon na magbe-bless ng ating gawain. You know, the reason why Joshua is discouraged uh, to, to face all the battles he's going to be facing is because of this promise, I will be with thee. And the strength that, that, that we need here, uh, here in the work of the Lord, is the strength of the Lord. The common power that was at work in Moses' life and in Joshua's life is the power of God. It's all about God. Because it's his ministry. That's why he's the one who will support, the, who, who will strengthen the ministry. It's not my ministry. It's not the pastor's ministry. It's not anyone's ministry. Kaya po pag may taong lagi nagsinasabing, look at my church, look at our church. Diba? May, may, there's something wrong with this theology. Something wrong. Why? Because God can kill him right there and the church will still be here. Right? That's why we should, we should always uh, realize that it is God's work and it's God who will supply the strength. Kaya po, kung ano man ang, whatever we accomplish, we can glorify God. Why? Because we know it's His work, it's His instruction, it's His strength that, that this was given to us to accomplish His instruction. Kaya nga po, uh, the Lord gave instruction to Joshua and said, Don't worry, I'll be with you. Don't worry. I know what I'm telling you is difficult. Wala man nga kayong mga bangkaw, I will let you cross this Jordan. Wala man nga kayong magamit, I will let you fight, fight people. But don't worry, I will be with you. Why? Because it's my strength. Kaya nga, Joshua realized, the Lord was with, Mo, with, was with Moses, nagawa niya lahat ng mga bagay niyan, kaya din namin. Why? Because the Lord will still be with us. So it is something that we, we have to realize that it is God's strength that strengthened us to, 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 to work in His, in His, in His ministry. Lagi po tayo mag-rely sa strength ng Panginoon. The reason why we are burnt out is because we rely too much on ourselves. The reason why we're tired is because we rely too much on our own wisdom. The reason why we keep on failing is because we rely too much on our plan and we don't just stop and listen to the instruction of the, uh, of the Lord and then do it uh, by His grace and by His might. Kaya nga po, kahit ano pong harapin nila Joshua dito, they are going to be, uh, to have this courage, they are going to have this uh, strength. Why? Because of the Lord. And uh, verse number 6, verse number 6 to 8, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In the work of the Lord, we need strength and we need courage. In the work of the Lord, let's realize that we need strength and we need courage. And as I have said previously, all of these things come from God. We ask it from Him. He says that we need it, but He also says that I will supply it. Just like in the book of James, God said, you need wisdom. I know you need wisdom and I'm ready to give it to you. Just ask. 
I'm ready to give it to you, just ask. But, but here, in, in, in verse number 6 to 8, we can see here that we need strength in the work of God because letter A, we need strength to keep on, to keep on obeying God's work. You know, it's not easy to obey God every single time in our lives. Kailangan po natin ng strength and courage to keep on obeying the work of God. The, the Bible says in verse 6, Be strong and have a good courage, for unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which shall swear unto their fathers. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Kailangan mo ng strength. You need strength, you need courage, so that you can keep on obeying what I said no matter what. Yeah. In that moment, maybe you will say, oh, of course it's easy, you're the one who, who commanded it, Lord. But when you're in the heat of the moment, when you're faced with a choice to obey God, which is the hard thing to do, and disobey God, which is always the easy thing to do, because we're in the flesh, mahirap na po mag-decide. That's why, kung madali lang pong sundin ng Panginoon, hindi na po natin kailangan itong preaching. If it's just easy to obey the Lord, we don't need to read the Bible. If it's just easy to obey the Lord, we don't need to pray for each other. If it's just easy to obey the Lord, we don't need to do whatever it is that we're doing. We just keep on obeying God. But the Bible says it is not that easy. And we have seen over and over again in the lives of the, of the people of God, no matter how spiritual, no matter how, uh, how good they are, no matter how close they are to God, they will mess up. They will all sometimes choose not to obey the Lord. That's why you need strength strength, you need courage. Bakit? Imagine mo, pamaputahin ka ng Panginoon to a very high uh, world city. Ano sasabihin sa'yo, oh, magmarcha na kayo. Hindi ba kailangan ng strength para, sa, para hindi kontrahin yung instruction? Hindi ba kailangan ng lakas ng loob para lumaban ang hawak-hawak nyo mga trompeta? Hindi ba kailangan ng courage para patuloy sumunod, uh, umapak sa, sa, sa uh, uh, in, to step out in faith into something that you know will harm you, but the God says, do it anyway. Hindi ba kailangan ng lakas ng loob? Kaya kasabi ng Panginoon, kailangan mo. Hindi lang yun. Ba- bakit? Ay, yung mga kasama mo, magre-reklamo pa. Kailangan mo ng lakas. Be strong. Be very courageous. Make sure you will always do what I say. Because the moment you don't do what I say, you're going to fail. And that's very early in their journey in possessing the, the promised land, it, when, when they face AI. But, but the Lord says, be strong, be very courageous. Why? We need that strength to obey the word of God. And, uh, we need the strength to keep, on obeying the, to keep on obeying the word of God. Why? It's hard to obey the word of God. First is we have our fallen nature. We have the flesh. Kung papipiliin lang po tayo to, between obeying and not obeying, doon tayo sa not obeying. Diba? Kung papipili lang tayo between a, a happy life dito sa earth, dito sa mundo na ito, to enjoy the things of this world, or to live a life of obedience to Christ and not and fully enjoy this world, alam, alam po natin, left alone what we will choose. But we need strength, we need courage to be able to keep on obeying God. Not only because of our flesh, but we need that strength to keep on obeying God because there are people who are going to lose along the way. We're, gonna, we're going to lose people. It's easy for Israel to enter the, the, the promised land and just be friends with everyone and to coexist with them. Nandito pa rin naman sila. Right? But the Lord says you have to possess it. You have to lose some people. Some people have to die. You have to... Uh, blood. You know, if you read the book of Joshua, it's a very bloody book. Ang dami pong gera. Ang dami pong patayan na nangyari. But God said... It has to happen. Kailangan yung gawin anyway. You need sacrifice. And if we say that we're going to keep on obeying and keep on trusting God, we're going to lose people along the way. You are going to lose people along the way. Not only people who, are, who do not have God in their hearts, but people who do not have that same resolve as you have. Why? Because the ministry today is full of shortcuts. At kung ikaw yung taong ayaw na shortcut, ayaw ka rin nila. The first thing that comes to mind is, uh, the way people, uh, 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 churches do evangelism today. Uh, in a matter of few weeks, a person will be saved, baptized, and surrendered to the Bible school. Am I saying that that's impossible? Of course not. Nothing is impossible sa Panginoon. But, am I, but it is very much unlikely. Why? Because today there is so, ma- so many counterfeit gospel. So many counterfeit Christ that is being preached. There are so many other alternatives. Right? Kaya nga po, that is very hard uh, 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 to accomplish for in just a few weeks someone will be saved baptized and surrendered you know last night we were studying uh, uh, repentance uh, I was studying repentance with Paul Lu and 
Well, I was, I'm sure that while, how, while he was reading that, he, he, he can realize that it's not easy to teach this, especially to Buddhist people. It's not easy for them to understand. It's not easy for them to understand the gospel, saving faith, re- repentance, uh, 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 being a sinner, Christ being the only one to be able to serve you. All of these things are new to them. It will, it will take more than a few weeks for them to be saved, to be baptized, and then to surrender their lives to God. That's why if you're, if you're someone who do not want to take that shortcut, we know what, what, what other uh, uh, missionaries think of our church. Right? Kung, 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 kung ayaw mong sumunod sa Agos, kung, sa, kung anong uso ngayon, mawawala ka na kaibigan. Because right? uh, we, we are never going to uh, uh, apply easy, easy believism in our church. We're, knowing, we're never going to apply uh, repeat after me, then you're saved uh, uh, theology in our church. We're never going to do that. We're never going to, 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 to have a short, short, shortcuts in the ministry. That's why it's that hard to keep on choosing to obey God. Paano pag wala na nag sa'yo, ikaw na lang? You need courage. You need strength to keep on doing that. Not only that, you need courage and strength because the devil is right there waiting for you. You need that. Why? Do you think the devil will take it will take it just sitting down and watch you be victorious for God? No. He's going to throw everything he has at you so that you will not be able to, to be successful in your endeavor for God. That's why you need strength. You need courage. Verse number 8 is very clear. We have, we have uh, uh, heard many um, uh, preaching about this. Keep the word of God as your guide. As we, start our, uh, as we start a new beginning, a new year here, let us be resolved to keep the word of God as my guide in my life. Lagi kong ikokonsulta ang Bible sa aking bawat desisyon. In every single step. You know, you know the reason why we, uh, we disobey God is because sometimes we don't know kung ano dapat natin gawin. Why? Because we don't study. And sometimes naman, we do study, but we don't take it seriously. That's why we don't even obey what we read in the Word of God. But if we have that resolve and, hel- and, and, and ask the help of God to, 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 to help us make every single decision according to the Word of God, then I'm sure that we're going to be able to accomplish His will. Kaya nga sabi ng, sabi ng, 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 ng Panginoon kay Joshua, what did uh, God say to Joshua? The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Come to think of it, this is the job of the priests not Joshua, right? But God said, I want you to take it a step for, further. Ikaw ang mismo ang mag-aral, ikaw mismo ang magsabi, ikaw mismo ang mag-rehearse, ikaw mismo ang mag-apply, ikaw mismo mag-implement sa mga tao. Why? It's the only way that you're going to be successful. It, you're kidding yourself if you're a believer and think that you're going to be successful apart from the Word of God. You're kidding yourself. You're, 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 you're kidding yourself to think that you're going to be successful in the eyes of God if you don't make every single decision na, na, uh, 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 according to the Word of God. Now, so keep the Word of God as your guide. Verse number 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Parang redundant na Panginoon. But God is emphasizing again, Have not I commanded thee? So another thing here is the encouragement in God's work also comes from God. You, know, you see a theme here? Everything in the work of God comes from God. The reason why we fail is because we forget that truth, that everything comes from God. Instruction comes from God, and uh, strength comes from God, everything comes from God. Even encouragement in times of trouble, it comes from God. Guess how, that's why God says, uh, have I not commanded thee, be strong and of good courage? Why is that a powerful verse? Why? Because of the I. Is it not me who's telling you to be strong? No, read that again and keep in mind, it's God who's talking. Have not I commanded thee? Tapos hindi ka pa magtitiwala? Hindi ba ako na mismo ang Panginoon, the one who created the world, the one, the sovereign God, who knows everything from the past, from end to end, who has no beginning, who, who has uh, uh, no, no end? It's me. I'm the one who's telling you that I will be with you. Just be strong. You have no reason to doubt. It's me. I'm the one who parted the Red Sea. I'm the one who led you through the wilderness. I'm the one who supplied for your need. I'm the one telling you, trust in me. And this is a great encouragement. If we just realize that in the work of God, as we're doing the work of God today, it is God who is encouraging us, I'm with you. I'm the one telling you to do that. Keep on doing it. Why? No matter what the circumstances are, 
I am the one telling you to keep on going. You know, what we don't realize sometimes when we don't obey God, it is a product of unbelief. That is it. The root of disobedience is unbelief. You cannot let go of that vice in your life because you don't believe uh, that, that God can replace it with something that will satisfy your soul. Right? You cannot let go of that job that keeps you from serving God because you don't believe that Christ, that God can supply all your needs. You cannot obey God in giving right to the church because you don't believe the Bible. Kasi kung tunay mong pinaniniwalaan, bakit hindi mo gagawin? Right? If I'm sick and I believe that uh, Paulo is a doctor, what keeps me from going to him and asking for his help? But if, I say, but if I say with my mouth that he's a doctor, I know it's a doctor, but I don't go to him and I'm sick, then I'm lying. I don't really believe that he's a doctor. Or maybe, I'll, maybe he's, a, he's a fake. In, my, in the back of my mind. Kaya nga po ito, this, uh, uh, this Israel, look at, look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Lahat ng kanilang failure to disobey God, uh, to obey God and disobey God is because of their unbelief. Hebrews 3, 17, But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Talking about this generation of Moses na hindi na nakapasok, na matay na sila doon. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. The same people God said aloud to be written in the book of Hebrews that these are people because of their unbelief. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. We can point to a lot of things because of uh, disobedience, because of hard-heartedness, because of hard-headedness, because of this and that. The root of all of these things is unbelief. I doubt the word of God. I doubt the promise of God. Hindi ko kakayanin bakit I don't really think God can sustain me in this uh, place. Kaya nga yung mga tao na uh, that, that those people who run away at the first sign of danger, deep in their hearts, it's unbelief. I don't believe God can save me from that. That is something that's dangerous. I'm out of here. I don't believe that God can save me from this problem that is about to come. I don't want to be, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be a part of that. That is when God shows us who are really His people. Why? Because in times of trouble, uh, His people will keep on standing, keep, uh, keep on trusting Him. So, th the encouragement comes from God. And I hope and I pray that if, even if you just read this verse 9, a lot of, uh, a lot of my friends in, in the Philippines, uh, in the Bible school, this is their life verse, Joshua 1, 9. Have not I commanded thee? I'm the one who's telling you, be strong. Alam niyo po ba, pag mayroon ka malakas na backup, matapang ka. Kapag mayroong malakas na nag-utos sa'yo, gagawin, gagawin mo. Kung ngayong gabing ito, sasabihin lang ng nanay ko, sige, bumili ka motor, Jong. Titigil ko yung preaching, bibili po ako ng motor. Kasi, malakas yung backup ko eh. ba? Malakas siya. Wala lang ko kontra kasi okay na si, si mami. <laughs> yun, yun nga lang, example, illustration po dyan. Diba? Kaya ang Panginoon pa kaya nagsabi, Sige, tuloy lang kayo sa gawain. Diyos to mismo ang nagsasabi na patuloy lang kayo sumunod sa akin. There's blessing. There's some, something waiting for you. Hindi pa ba natin gagawin? Yeah, why, I don't know why it's always a uh, 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 dito, struggle for us to trust and obey the faithful God who has never lied, who has always been faithful, who has, ever, who has always come through for us. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 7, 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. Ito po ang ating Panginoon na, 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 na sinusunod, na, 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 na pinaglilungkuran. Verse 5, verse 24, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Keep on hoping, keep on doing what is right, uh, without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Is that not enough reason to keep going? Because the God who we have been reading in the Bible, who did all of these wonderful things, who is sovereign, or who is powerful, is the one who's telling us to do all of these things. Yes, persecution will come, but God is faithful. 
Yes, temptations will come, but God is faithful, the Bible says in Corinthians, to provide a way of escape. Yes, God's promises are reliable. That's why with confidence we can continue, we can persevere, we can keep on going. Verse number 10 to 11, and, I, and, and, and this is just a, a message to the leaders of the church. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. One thing that you can notice in the message of Joshua to the people, because all of this time it is God talking to Joshua, but after that, it's Joshua's time to talk to the people. Whatever Joshua told them is what, just whatever God told him. dinagdagan. And I'm talking to the leaders of the church today that if we're going to be working in the work of the Lord, be sure that we are working still uh, within the scope of what God is telling us to do. Laging dun lang po. Wag tayo lalabas. Pag tayo nagpe preach, we just preach the word of God, nothing else. Now, Joshua just told the people to do what God told him to do. That's it. Right? That's, that's his job. Yun lang ang kailangan niya. God told him to lead the people to possess the promised land and later on to divide uh, the possession, yun lang ang gagawin niya. Hindi na niya dalagdagan. Hindi niya sinasabing, uh, kailangan niyo rin akong uh, payamanin kasi ako yung naglilid. Uh, kailangan niyo rin pala akong ganto-ganto kasi, kasi ako yung nag, uh, nagpopro, nagsasabi sa inyo kung anong sabi ng Panginoon. Hindi. Sinabi niya lang kung anong sinabi ng Panginoon. Tapos. You know, as leaders of the church, as preachers, we have to realize that our authority comes from God and, and, and anything that is outside of that, hindi na po natin hawak. You know, the reason why we struggle in the ministry is because we preach and we force people at the same time. You know, if God is working in us to preach, God is working in them to obey. Our job is to preach, hindi magpilit. Our job is to preach what God said, not our own opinion. So when, when we look at Joshua saying, whatever God told him, that's what he's, he's going to tell people. If, if God is faithful to call us, be faithful to obey as well. Kung sundin lang po natin kung ano ang uh, ang sinabi ng Panginoon. And, and these are the things that uh, uh, I, I posted uh, uh, this morning uh, uh, sa, sa aking uh, Facebook. God's authority is ultimate. The pastor's authority is delegated and limited by the Word of God. The pastor, the leader is to serve God's people with the Word of God and to restrain his preferences and opinions. When a pastor or a leader departs from Scripture and wanders into opinion, there is neither obedience nor submission due unto him. Yan lang, yan lang po ang authority ni Moses. Yun lang ang authority ni Joshua and they are working within the scope of their authority. So, so after jo God talked to Joshua, gave the message to Joshua, he faithfully relayed that message to the people. Sana po as preachers, yun po ang ating ugali. Kung ano man po ang tinuro sa atin ng panahon, sinabi sa atin, yun lang po yung faithfully re-relay natin sa mga tao. We, hindi na natin dagdagan. Hindi na po natin babawasan. That's why the, always the safest way to preach is just preach from the Bible. Not preach from your opinion. Not preach from current events or whatever. Preach from the Bible. And then to the Reubenites and to the Gadites. I, I have more things in verse number... Uh, uh, 11 and uh, verse number 11 to, to notice here. But last night, when I told my wife that I, I finished typing the message in its 14 pages, sabi niya, uwi na daw sila. I'm not sure if she's still there. Uh, but we'll, we'll move on anyway. Uh, upload ko na lang po ito and you can uh, read it. Verse number 12 to 15 is we can see cooperation in God's work. And even if we read until verse number 18, we can see their cooperation and unity. And in short, I will t we, we, know, we all know the story. Joshua turned to the Reubenites, to the Gadites, and to the half the tribe of Manasseh, and reminded them of their deal with Moses. Uh, reminded them that, yes, this uh, land that we are on now, this is your inheritance. Kasi nakipagsundo kayo, gusto nyo dito na, ayaw nyo nang lumipat. Kasi uh, masagana, uh, uh, this is a good land. You can, you can, uh, pr it provides for your cattle. It will be provided, uh, you, you will be able to provide for your family. Okay. But remember that, that your deal with Moses says that you have to go with us to fight first. When God gives us the land, then you can also possess your land. Diba? So, one thing that a lot of, uh, we can preach a whole message through this verse number, uh, 12 to 18. But let's just look at uh, a few truths in this verse. For those of you who have already read the book of Joshua, we, we will see that there's consequences in the decision of these tribes. Uh, in the end, magkakaroon ng problema because of their selfish decision. But, wag muna tayo doon. Dito muna tayo sa kanilang response kay Joshua. 
Verse number 16. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. This is a very encouraging response to the leader. You know, as a church, we need this kind of people. People who will say that if it's God who told you that, we're with you. If it's God who commanded you that, we're going to do it. Wherever we're going to go, whatever that is, we're going to do. Why? Because we know it's God who told you. Uh, focus on the response. You know, in this church, we need more encouragement for our mga leaders. You know, we don't just look at the leaders and the preachers and the pastor to give us encouragement every Wednesday, every Sunday, whenever they preach. It. You, do, do you realize that they also need encouragement? Uh, simply pagsunod lang is encouragement enough for them. Simply pagsasabi lang na pinagpapray namin kayo is encouragement enough for the people who are standing behind this pulpit. Why? Because they also struggle. They're also being discouraged. They're also having all these things that you are experiencing. They're not supernatural people. They're just people who are called by God to preach. That's it. They're nothing special. They're just preachers of the Word of God. But they also need encouragement. Response man lang. Minsan, ang ganda lang na sinabi, pinag-aralan, amen? Pa-amen, amen ka pa nung oras na. Diretso na, magkaroon pa-amen. Di ba? But look at the response of these people. Whatever that is, if it is from God, if God is with you, we'll do whatever it is, we'll go wherever you go. Not because you say so, but because God is with you. Be- but because God, just because God was with Moses, we obeyed Him. If God is with you, we're going to obey you. Sana po, as we start this year, we're going to have that unity. That's what we need in this church. Diba? Tao, yung mga tao na magsasabi, kahit ano pa yan, kumpara sa Panginoon, makikiisa kami. But then, let's go, let's look at, uh, nakita natin yung kanilang response. Pero, palawakin natin. Uh, I, I'm sure that yung mga, may mga tao dito na nag-respond at talagang yun ang puso nila na, na makiisa sa bawat isa. Pero, palawakin natin. Later on, magkakaroon ng... Uh, magkakaroon ng consequences tong decision nila. Why? Because though they're united in this decision in fighting, they're not really with their brethren. Why? Kasi, sige, may kipaglaban kami. Pero pagkatapos, wala na, alis na kami. Diba? Yun yung mga tao, let's compare it today, yun yung mga tao na, yes, every Sunday, nandiyan kami, makipag-fellowship kami, we give our best, baka nga sila pa yung maganda, ang itsura, sila pa yung mga magaling sa ministry, pero pagkatapos, at the end of the day, they're not really with us. At the end of the day, meron pa, rin, meron pa rin wall of division. Na, you cannot really put your finger on it, but there is it. Nandun, nandun, hindi talaga sila tunay na united sa atin. Yes, these people will give their lives in fighting, but after everything is said and done, tapos na ha, hanggang dyan na lang kami, balik na kami this other side of the Jordan. And later on, we can see that there's consequences here. Kung hindi din po tayo truly united, 100%, na hindi ko po sinasabing uniform, but united in the cause of God, magkakaroon at magkakaroon po ng problema. Magkakaroon. Later on, magkakaproblema. That's why as we start this new year, I want to challenge our church to keep the, uh, to, 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 to keep the work of God the work of God. Realize that this is God's work. The Bible says in uh, Corinthians 15:58, uh, 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 "Therefore, beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of what? The work of the Lord. It is the work of the Lord. Keep it that way. Lagi po natin isipin ang gawain na ito ay gawain ng Panginoon. I'm not here for myself. I'm not here for anyone. I'm here for the Lord. This is the Lord's work. Our instruction in this uh, in this in this church comes." from God's word. The, the presence that we need in this church is not the, the pastor, it's not the preacher, but it's the presence of God. The encouragement we need is encouragement that is coming from the word of God. And at the same time, we need to encourage each other and be united in working for the Lord. I pray, I hope and I pray that we start this year in that kind of perspective. Magkakaisa po kami kasi gawain ito ng Panginoon. Hindi na po natin kailangan maggawan pa ng ibang, ibang uh, dahilan kung bakit tayo nagkakaisa. Yun lang, gawain ito ng Panginoon. 
And He's the one instructing us. He's the one giving us strength. He's the one sustaining us. He's the one who's doing everything. Wag na po natin tanawin na utang na loob kahit sino sa, sa, sa room na ito. Only to the Lord. Kung magkakaisa po tayo that this is God's work, it is all about God, marami po tayong malalagpasan. Whatever happens sa ating simbahan, patuloy po natin malalagpasan. Hope and I pray na tayo po united talaga. Hindi po tayo katulad ng mga to na, okay, sige, kailangan mag... Uh, naalala nyo, uh, kapag ka nag... meron akong kilala, kasi mahirap po na gumawa sa Panginoon, nakala mo kasama mo lahat, pero meron palang secret din sumasabotahe. Meron akong kilala, tago na natin sa pangalang Baby Kangaroo. Di ba, lagi po kami nasa baba, nagmi-meeting kami, mga preacher. Secret pala, minsan, nire-record. Minsan, kaya pala nagkipag-meeting, para lang magkaroon ng bala na ibato sa simbahan. Kaya si Baby Kangaroo, nung nagkaroon na siya ng enough bu- bullets, binaril na ng binaril sa atin. E, mahirap pong kumihilos at maggawa sa gawain kung may mga tao na merong, ulti- merong sariling mo- motibo. And sana po kung ganun tayo, nakita natin, oh Lord, parang last year, some, somewhat may ganun din ako. Lord, this year, help me make it all about you. And if and if I cannot if I cannot remove this selfish motive, Panginoon, and if I will just be a, a reason para po maging problem, magkaroon ng problema sa simbahan, Lord, just remove me from this place. Because this is your work. Pero po sa taong ligtas, I don't see any problem or any hindrance. Kung hihingin lang natin sa Panginoon, Lord, help me make it all about you. And as, as, we, as, 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 you, as we continue to look at this book, as long as Israel is making, all, making it all about God, they're victorious. Battles after battles, mananaro sila. But once they deviate from trusting God and from the Word of God, that's when they fail. Sana po, uh, I, hope, and I, I hope and I pray na ito po magiging ating year's resolution. As a church, we start make, to make it all about God. The ministry is all about Him. We will be united because it is His work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this evening. I pray, Lord, that you uh, have a... Uh, uh, you continue to